Testing, testing, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Uh, we also at this event happened to be in the company of some of the earlier pioneers of the fire department. Um, we have here Mr. James Edwards and Mr. Manuel Henderson. And these were the ones who were part of the early uh, integration of the black firefighters. So when, when did you graduate from uh, the fire department? February the 8th. 1954. And what was it like? Wonderful. And what was the experience like? It was wonderful. And how did you feel about being, well, well uh, let's put it this way, how large was your class? We had a class of 50 some men, but well, 21 of us was black. Okay, and after 21, how many got out? I mean, how many? Uh, all how of many us, all of us graduated. Oh, excellent, wonderful. Yeah. And so are you still active? Oh no, that's uh, like almost like 50 or some years ago. Okay. And what was Baltimore like as a fireman in 54? Oh, it was very interesting. It was a funny thing. Uh, There's a lot of segregation and uh, stuff like that going on, but we uh, persevered and things went on very well for us because we were able to handle it. Okay, and, and um, how did you feel, though, about having to eat in separate kitchens and... and well, we didn't actually, actually, we might have uh, set it in separate tables in the, uh, like in the kitchen. And uh, some companies wouldn't let you drink coffee. Um, we didn't like it, mm -hmm. but uh, we were able to uh, have a set person Excellent. And how was it for you? You want to tell us um, what... You want to tell us your name again? My name is Manuel Henderson. And you you graduated when? In the March of 1957. And how was that for you? Well, I was very happy to get the job. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a hard time. You want to tell us a little bit about that hard well, time? Well, we had a hard time. We couldn't eat with people. We couldn't sleep with people. We couldn't, there's so many things we couldn't do. And uh, everything we did, we had to do on our own and try to get make things move further and along, so we organized through a great man I call him today, Charlie Thomas. He started it all for us to begin to get our heads together and start on a path that we could get to where we are today. Excellent. Yes. Well, I also add that uh, we had organizations behind us, NAACP, Urban League, 
who somewhat coached us mm -hmm. on how to react while we was in the when we went into the fire department. Uh, and so this was somewhat similar to uh, I'm not comparing us to Jackie Robinson, but in other words, you know how they had to uh, coach him. Right. So we were coached. And a lot of that happened. Of course, even at that, we still had some fights. And all that. We, we, That's what I want to add to it. Okay. We still would like to mention a couple of other people, I mean, that we had tremendous help from during our struggle. And that's Marion C. Baskin, for one. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, and uh, Berta Welcome. Yes. Sir. And uh, Clarence Mitchell. I mean, these people helped us immensely during the time, Urban League and also the NACP. But these people put their Put out, they was out front when we really needed them. Mm -hmm. And thank God that we we persevered. That's right. Thank God. Right. Well, I'm trying to imagine what it was like, though, when you're in, in, in the middle of, like, fighting a fire and you're having to work with those who were not African-American and, and making you feel safe. And um, was it any problems with you in doing your job? Well, I could say truly, I never had a problem in fighting the fire. And I never had trouble fighting fires with the guys. Mm -hmm. It's just that our trouble seemed to happen back in the fire. Okay. You know, our troubles on the fire ground. I didn't have any troubles on the fire ground. I did my job, and everybody else had a job to do, and you did it. Okay. So pretty much, when you were out fighting the fires, there was a certain unity there. Oh, uh, it was a unity. Yeah, I you. think so. Uh, and to me, when I felt I felt oppressed for a long time, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, as we organized and tried to get ourselves together and, and understand that we were free and we wanted to be free. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we struggled, but uh, through SAF, Social Association of Firefighters, also Charles Thomas started and Val Open Blazers, mm -hmm. these are the kind of things that helped us along. If we hadn't had those things behind us and people like Charlie, okay. we wouldn't be anywhere today. Well, what was what were some of the things that you found that you had to do, though, to to win your so-called well, your freedom? I mean, to, well, to express was, that. Well, it was never, it's never, uh, we never wanted to still fight now. Uh, it's very simple, uh, but uh, I would say, add, and adding to what uh, Manuel said about firefighting, uh, segregation is funny. Uh, in the fire, in the midst of a fire, somebody, if I go down, the white boy do everything in his, in his, in his power to do, to keep me going. Uh, he'd give me mouth to mouth or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if he come back to the engine house and he didn't want to drink out the same cup, you see. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a funny segregation yeah, a little funny. Of, very yeah. funny. So those are things that uh, I was wanted to bring out. And, uh, and let's also say, with no, everybody, of the white persuasion was not really uh, bad. Yeah. They weren't bad right. to us. Mm -hmm. Because it's just like in the Civil Rights Movement, if it hadn't been for some, things wouldn't be as it is today. So we recognize and realize this is what happened. So that's what we are doing. Okay, that's wonderful. So what are some of the things you want to say to the younger people today about um, who inspired to become firemen? Well, I would say to the young people, just it's one of the best jobs you can have there in this world because you first of all our job was to save lives and save property and just have pride in your job because that's what we had back in those days we had pride and company against company no matter what color you was when you got on that fire ground you, you served your company as, the, as, the, as any war or anything else would be. I would tell all the young men now get in study learn go as far as you can do what you can do your job don't sit around and leap and see what people are going to do. Do what you're supposed to do. You know the rules. Follow the rules and regulations and you will make it all the way to the end like I am. And I'm a happy man. I've been retired for 23 years. And thank God that I'm alive and only got one scar the whole time I was fighting fire. And I fought fires. Amen. Well, thank you. And I want to thank you for joining us. It's wonderful and my pleasure. Go back and enjoy the party and have a good time and I'll catch up with you later with my pleasure. <laughs> Sure. And thank you again for calling. So good and thank you for being with us and we'll be right back.
Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Um, we also we have a couple of more uh, firefighters from the early days. Um, we want to talk to um, your name is Carl W. Miles. Mr. Miles, look at the camera and let us say see, see your beautiful face. Carl W. Miles. Mr. Miles and Harlan R. Davenport. Mr. Davenport. And you want to tell us what year you graduated? I graduated in uh, September 1956. 1956. You have to speak a little louder. September 1956. I'm sure you'd be saying, oh, hey, throw that ladder down here. <laughs> they heard you then, didn't they? Yeah. Okay. You want to tell us about that experience? What was it like being a firefighter back then? Well, it was different. It was different. We, uh, on the fire ground, we worked together. But back in the firehouse, we had uh, separate toilets, separate sinks. Our bed was like in the corner. And we couldn't use the dishes. We had to bring our own dishes, mm. cups, and things. It was different, and we couldn't. Uh, we had no privileges for exchanging the television or uh, reading the papers and stuff like that. But uh, just it, it was very, very different. You just know, simple things that sim kind of simple things that uh, uh, it makes you demean it, like you know, strange. But uh, when the gun went off, we went out on the fire ground. We was we did our job because every person on that wagon uh, hook and ladder had a certain thing that he did, mm -hmm. and we did our job. And uh, I was in an engine company when I first went in, and then I got transferred to a trucking company, and uh, I got to be, become an emergency vehicle driver. I drove a hook and ladder, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the, the, and the fellas on the fire ground, we, we didn't have too much segregation on the fire ground, but the segregation was all within the fire house. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to live within the rules. And uh, to Charlie Thomas and a lot of more people, you know, we, we, we worked as black firefighters. We formed social association of firefighters and then the Vulcan Blazers. And we work together. And that's important. As a firefighter, did you feel, as an African-American firefighter in those days, did you feel that you had to do, give like a 110% performance in order to be accepted? I think I did. Yeah. And I always did my job. I did it the best I could. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have anybody to follow me to train. I had to watch them to see what they were doing to learn the job. You mean they actually would not sit down with you and, and yeah. show you what it was they, they wanted to do? They would even talk to me. They would like to say, I come in in the morning, they would eat, uh, i say good morning. And they look, just look at me and I just would go on, change my clothes and be ready to, to do the job. But, yep. they, but they, they wouldn't say anything to me. Yeah, how did that make you feel as a, as a person and as, as a firefighter and what you were trying to accomplish? Well, uh, I just kind of overlooked it because, like I say, uh, before coming into the fire department, I worked at Martin's and I worked in an all-white uh, gang freight, unloading freight. Mm -hmm. they, and uh, and I always got along great. You know, and, I mean, they treated me good, but like I say, when I came into the fire department, it looked like it changed. Mm -hmm. they, now, the only thing they would let me get into the coonskin to read the paper, but a lot of times I'd be sitting there looking at the TV. They uh, they get tired of looking at it, turn it off. See that I had had nothing in it, you know. As if you were not even there. Yeah, right. What's this cool thing? What's that you just mentioned? Yeah, uh, what's that? It's a a fun fun that we have that they had uh, the paper, the papers, and, and stuff like that. Uh, coffee, 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 sugar, salt, pepper, like that. We have what we call a cone skin in the firehouse, which uh, the cone skin consists of uh, we buy sugar, coffee, cream, salt and pepper, 
and certain other things that the firemen use in the files. And we put up X amount of money every pay for that. And it was, it was fine. But a lot of the houses didn't allow the black firefighters to be in it. At all? They and had to all. live like at home? They had to bring everything they used, they had to bring with them. You couldn't use the same, you had to bring your own cup, your own coffee, and your own cream and sugar. And how did you feel about that? I felt, I felt like, uh, I felt left out, which I was left out. And then, uh, when in my firehouse, uh, three engine, where I got first assigned to it, we had a captain there who was a, a very liberal man. And he said, he made the statement that we're going to have a coon skin in this firehouse. Every member of this house will be in it. Mm -hmm. Well, some of the guys didn't want to be in it with a black firefighter. But uh, I was in it. And uh, I had a, my first lieutenant who was a, a funny man. But he, I learned from him because I listened and I watched. And that's what you have to do when nobody want to teach you. Mm -hmm. You have to watch and you have to learn. And uh, I tried to do my best on the fire grind. And uh, if you did your best, somebody might be involved in the, in, the, in the fire. You have to go in and you have to help get them out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, another question, um, you said that you were there, were there others, uh, did you have companions there, or were you just pretty much black, the only I was, black? I was only black on my Oh, ship. that must have been really humiliating, I mean, well, demeaning. It was very demeaning, because sometimes, if I got detailed to another house, I walk in and say good morning, nobody would say anything. Mm -hmm. And I remember one incident, I got a detailed to a, a house over in Highland Town, and I walked in that evening, and I said good evening, nobody said nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, I detail, I was the only black firefighter there, and I walk in, I say, good evening. And uh, my detail said, you de detailed the 20 truck. Well, I put my stuff on 20 truck. Well, that night about 9.30, we, we got to run. And uh, I jumped on 20 truck. But when the company came back from the fire, the lieutenant said, don't you know where you were supposed to ride, boy? I say, my detail said 20 truck. He said, you know, when the truck go out, you're supposed to ride the engine. You're supposed to be the uh, jump man, swing man. I said, well, did you tell me that when I came here? I said, you didn't even speak to me. And we had a, a misunderstanding yeah, about it. I was going to ask you how was there his response to that. And he, he started cursing, and I started cursing. He said, don't curse me. I said, you curse me, and I'm a man just like you. And uh, I was wrong, but I left the vows. Uh -huh. And the chief, chief hand, came by my house and got me, and he asked me what happened, and I told him. He said, I'm going to send you back to three engine. He said, I'm going to detail you back to 20 truck tomorrow night. You got a problem with that? I said, no, I don't have a problem. And uh, I went back there, and when I walked in that evening, I said, good evening. And the lieutenant said, you, you, you're riding lead off, man, on 41 engine. But things happen to black firefighters, and you have to speak up for yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in the 1st Battalion then, and I got transferred to the 8th Battalion, which is a hook and ladder. And I enjoyed that because, you know, I, I got a chance to go in and save people's life. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And, uh, um, I want to ask you um, again about the being the only black. I understand that they only provided one space per one house. Bed. One, one bed. One bed. Yeah. Or, uh, and, uh, we had, and we had to bring all of our own equipment. But a lot of times, the guys get detailed, they would use another firefighter in that house equipment. Mm -hmm. But when a black firefighter got detailed, he had to take all his equipment with him. Okay, I'm going to ask Mr. Davenport a question, but I understand that you're one of the highest decorated uh, firefighters. You want to tell us about so, uh, maybe one of your... Uh, well... You didn't I'm, wear any today. No, no. Well, I... Uh, I was, uh, got to be an emergency vehicle driver, a truck 15. And before I was an emergency vehicle driver, I rode the hook and ladder. And the hook and ladder's job is to go overhaul, ventilate, and rescue. And I just happened to be at certain places at the right time, and I would go in and, and get people out. And I tell you, there's no feeling like it when you know you're responsible for saving a life. I cannot explain it.
That's wonderful. You want to tell us a little bit about some of your uh, episodes or your events? Well, I was uh, in maybe three, four years before Carl was. Uh, I came through it in April of 1954. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, it was one other in my battalion that, that I was assigned to, and that was John Murray. And, uh, but we never worked together. Uh, we had the group system. But like I say, we would pass each other, but we never was working together at any time. Uh, we had our own separate bowls, our own separate beds. Uh, like I say, we brought our own utensils and uh, coffee. If we, wanted, if we drank coffee, we brought everything with us. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you feel when you started seeing others uh, joining your, your houses as well, well time went on? Well, some of the houses in the district that you got detailed to, a lot of times it's better than the house that you were in. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guys sort of treat you a little different. And like, say, some houses, like 47, like get detailed. The guy said, uh, that good, wash yourself a cup out and if you want some coffee, good, mm -hmm. drink some. Mm -hmm. But I mean, when when more black men started integrating the firehouses, how did you begin to feel then? Well, I, uh, it, you got a chance to, to work with some of them. And, but like I say, if you were working and they had a detail of black coming from another house, they, they sent him back because they, they didn't have no bed to, mm -hmm. to sleep in, especially if it was night work. Mm -hmm. Daytime, he might stay. But night, nighttime, he did that same back because he only had that one bed, and that was the bed I was sleeping in. Okay, and as I asked the others, uh, is there anything that you want to, you know, share with young people um, about what they, you know, if they have the uh, initiative and the motivation to become fire? Well, what I, would you say? I to tried them? to uh, in my course of time, in the third, four, five years I was there, uh, the younger fellows coming in, I would try to teach them as much as I knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, about working and what they're supposed to do. Uh, and I was in, uh, in the company for five years before going in the truck company for 14 years, and then coming back into an Indian company. Mm -hmm. uh, I retired after 11 years in an Indian company after making a PO, which was uh, driving back and forth and teaching fellows on the ship how to operate the pump. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for being with me today. Go back up and have a good time. Okay. Thank you. And um, thank you very much. We'll be right back. <laughs>